actually it was it was this girl right here who I talked to about she was the one who was like telling me like this is a mistake of a lifestyle if you don't smoke and drink like you're gonna keep going to these places and you will not have any fun and you know what she was right about it she was right I got so tired of it I got so bored of it I feel like I'm missing stuff in my life I look at the experiences that these guys have I look at how much fun all these people are having and I'm like I'm in the same situation as them why am I not able to have the fun that they're having yeah it was this girl who who like opened my eyes if you were to ask me hey why don't you enjoy going to the club I would literally tell you it's because I don't drink I don't smoke but hearing somebody else tell me that straight up in a very blunt manner it was like okay this is this is actually what's happening I believe this is actually after uh those girls left um the girls who were like talking to me we talked quite a bit about like uh alcohol and like just like not not necessarily like just intoxication in general but just alcohol like after that i made the decision like i don't want to work with people who who drink after that point um and it's not that like I, i'm not saying that i don't want to work with people who drink i'm saying after a certain point if I'm going to narrow down my choices, if I'm going to start to filter people out, like, oh, I'm working with too many people, too many chefs in the kitchen, I'm going to go, well, who drinks? And if you drink, then you're going to be the first to be kicked out. It's not that you can't be productive and also drink. It's that the most productive people don't. Like, tell me, tell me something. In what situation, actually, in all honesty, I'm about to be disrespectful here. In what situation is drinking beneficial? Like, really think about it for a second. Getting drunk is the end goal for people who are drinking, usually, right? First of all, I think drinking calories by itself is just not a good idea, okay? Me personally, I eat all my calories. I probably should drink more calories because I'm trying to gain weight. But if you want to lose weight, you shouldn't drink calories. You should eat all of them. Usually I just, I drink water. Um, I, sometimes I drink milkshakes, uh, rarely, like once every six months or so. Sometimes I'll take a few sips of soda in the right occasion, but alcohol, like, okay, let's be straight up about this. Alcohol is a liar, okay? It makes you have a false perception of reality, and that can be fine, but here's the issue. Humans are smart, okay? Sometimes we're smart, sometimes we're dumb, but we have moments of intelligence. We have that in us to be intelligent. We can be smart. We can be self-aware. And we see through this BS. We see through the lies. Over time, we see the truth. Not immediately, but over time. When I was with Chum, we'd go to these clubs. We'd bring back a bunch of girls. And I'd talk to them just out of curiosity. Just because I liked the stories they'd tell me. Which, like, was super odd to them. Because in their world, nobody ever does that. Everyone around them, including themselves, considers them objects. So when someone comes up to them and treats them like a human... They yearn for it. They don't want to stop. They're like super engaged. I've gotten some great stories out of these kind of, these like girls that have been picked up at the club. And I asked these girls in North Carolina, um, who were in that in those earlier pictures. Uh, I was like, I was like, how are you guys able to have fun at the club? I've been to plenty of clubs, and by all accounts, I should have had like the dream experiences, you know. I've been in the VIP lounges with the biggest people throwing the most money. I got like the baddest girls here twerking on me or whatever. I've been on stage with A-list rappers in front of like the biggest crowds. And I was bored the whole entire time. And they're confused. They're like, they're, they, one of them looks at me and they go like, uh, did you pregame before you went? And I go like, what does that mean? And then they explained it to me. And I was like, oh no, I don't drink. And they all nod in agreement. They're like, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you got to smoke or drink or do both or something, you know? And I thought about this a lot. Like, they all weren't... This is crazy that they're all in agreement on this. And the, the more I think about it, the more I realize I've never once seen a sober person enjoy a club-type experience. Like, ever. Unless they're the ones making money. If there is an experience that you can only enjoy while you're drunk, while you're not in your true self, then it's not an experience worth spending your time on. It's an experience that is not actually enjoyable. You're lying to yourself when you tell yourself it's enjoyable. 
It's one part of your mind, the stupid part of your mind, lying to the smart part of your mind. And eventually, that smarter part of your mind is going to realize, hey, this is actually not fun. You're telling me you're having fun, but I'm being lied to right now. And eventually, the smarter part of your mind will figure it out if you are an intelligent person and if that smarter part of your mind wins at the end of the day, which for some people it doesn't. For some people, they're just too stupid to realize that. But for a lot of people, they, they look at how much time they've wasted subconsciously and they understand how boring their life is, despite doing all these seemingly interesting things that their stupid part of their mind is telling them, yeah, you're living such an interesting life. Look at how interesting things are. Look at, look at that. But the smarter part of their mind goes, wow, I'm, I'm such a boring person. I'm doing nothing with my life. People are so concerned with having an interesting life that they'll sacrifice the chance to actually have an interesting life just to lie to themselves and convince themselves and others that they're having an interesting life. Now, let's be clear about this, okay? I got no problems with people who drink. Okay, everyone drinks. Drinking is normal, okay? It's a symbiotic relationship between humans and certain kinds of plants, all right? If it wasn't a core part of the human experience, then everybody wouldn't be so deeply affected by it, you know, in the same way. You wouldn't be able to make memes out of it. It wouldn't be a relatable experience. So there is an evolutionary advantage to that experience. But here's the problem. Whenever I talk about something being normal, like drinking is normal, if I call something normal, people like to be called normal. You know, if, if I call somebody normal, they relax. They're like, oh, I'm normal, I'm good. No, you idiot, that's a bad thing. Everyone drinks and that's normal. But who wants to be normal? Normal people don't change the world. Normal people don't work for themselves. Normal people don't become exceptional in any field. Normal people are not remembered after their death. Normal people don't have unique tastes. Normal people are losers. And most people are normal people. Interestingly enough, most people also drink. And you ask normal people, you ask normal people like, hey, is your life interesting? And they go, oh yeah, bro, my life is so interesting. And I go, really? What was the last interesting thing you've done? Tell me in words, the last interesting, th tell, me, tell me some story, okay? And they always tell me the same thing. So a lot of them can't even say anything because they're smart enough to realize that they're not actually having interesting stories. But the stupid ones tell me the same story that can basically be summarized as, as I was sober and then I got drunk and then I did nothing, but I was drunk while doing it. So I convinced myself I was enjoying it. That's it. That's the whole story. Most people drink. Most of my friends drink actually. I don't care, but I don't like to work with people who drink. If I had the choice, I'm going to choose it. Somebody, I'm going to choose somebody who doesn't drink. That's all. Cause if you can truly enjoy life, enough to not need alcohol, then don't drink. If it truly makes no difference, like people say, oh, I can enjoy it, then don't do it. Alcohol screws with your liver, okay? Your liver is responsible. It is the main regulator of the process of storing your initial and quick backup reserves of ATP, which give you muscles for uh, 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 concentric and eccentric um, and isometric uh, muscle contraction, right? So in short, like I'm going to skip a few steps, but in general, the more you drink, the less you're able to work out and get swole. So nobody, nobody, there's downsides to drinking. You have to actually have substantial benefits to do something. If somebody does something, you ask them, hey, why are you doing that? You better have a damn good reason. It better be significantly better than placebo and significantly better than just doing nothing, right? Because there's literally downsides. And you do it to get drunk. Nobody drinks just to drink. It's very rare in America, at least. Which, if they do that, they're even more stupid. Because that's even worse. Because not only are you not getting a full experience, I'm talking about, um, what's it called? not not getting drunk but not only are you not getting the full experience of alcohol if you don't get drunk you're still damaging your body 
a lot of people go like, oh, everything in moderation. No, not everything in mo moderation. You shouldn't take arsenic in moderation, okay? Everything in moderation is literally an oversimplification, a generalization that stupid people make. That who are not critical, who, who don't think meticulously about these things, about the decisions that they make. It's an excuse, really. Alcohol damages your liver the instant you ingest a drop of it. If you drink, then at least make the most of your experience and realize that you're sacrificing some of your health for some temporary pleasure, right? And whether or not you decide that that's a good sacrifice to make is up to you. In fact, I want to make that sacrifice. There's several different kinds of drugs, including alcohol, that, I mean, I've tried alcohol, but there's several different kinds of experience, uh, uh, different kinds of hallucinogenic and psychedelic experiences that I want to try, that I want to experience, knowing full well I'm going to sacrifice pieces of my health to achieve it. And if that's a sacrifice you're willing to make, then that's on you. And it seems to me like the intelligent way to drink is to go in to get drunk. But in, the, in all the situations that you would drink, only the ones where you would actually get drunk have any sort of merit to them, right? So what situations, let's find out what situations you would get drunk in that have merit to them. So we can find out at least one instance where, where drinking is actually like a, a, something that you would want to do other than to experience it for the first time. To know what it's like, you know? I always hear for one of them, it's like to cheer up. You know, you drink because you're down. Well, you don't need to be Albert Einstein to realize that a band-aid that also poisons you will destroy you in the long term. So use something else. Or don't use a band-aid. Let the nitrogen do its job. <clears throat> and I don't want to go into that rabbit hole because I don't know that much about it, but... Even people who drink are fully aware of the dangers of drinking when you're down so that you can lift yourself up. That leads you to be an alcoholic, really. But what about, um, what about to celebrate, right? So the, the, the situation where you're down, you got to feel up, that's out of the question. What about where you're already up and you want to feel even better? You know, that whole like drinking every night because you drink to my accomplishments. Now that makes no sense either, because I remember um, there was this dude, me and this dude were uh, talking, we, we, we were starting this journey of like consecration, right? We don't talk anymore, but we were in this new place and his mom was there and um, his mom was like, no, don't drink that much. And he's like, I'm celebrating the new accomplishment, right? The fact that we made it here and that the journey ahead. And I'm thinking like, why would you celebrate by getting drunk? Don't you want to celebrate a lot? Right? Don't you want to celebrate every day? Every moment? Don't you want to do things all the time? Accomplish things all the time? So often that there's a call for celebration every minute of every day? If you drink when you accomplish something, you're kind of setting yourself up to live a boring and empty life. You're kind of creating this self-fulfilling prophecy that <coughs> if I drink to my accomplishments, I'm limiting the amount of times I can accomplish things. Like mentally, you're setting up this mental limiter of, of how much you can accomplish in your life. Even though it may not seem like you're limiting yourself, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Paulo Coelho, your words become reality. And because you're accomplishing less stuff less frequently, it makes you want to drink even more and celebrate your sparse accomplishments even more. And now you're really on the downward spiral of, like, in the best case scenario, normalcy, mediocrity, being average. Uh, and to me, that's a tragedy. I'd die before, I, before you call me average or normal. And in the worst case scenario, screwing up your whole life. Now, I, like I said before, it is possible to be someone who drinks and is also able to do stuff with their lives, you know? Of course, like millions of people do it, millions. Actually, probably billions of people have drank alcohol and have like at least made something of their lives, right? <clears throat> but just me personally, if you wanna work with me, right? I have a standard, okay? Make it easy for me. 
prove it to me that like in very few words prove it to me that you're really out here trying to accomplish stuff limitless accomplishments right that you want to be the greatest prove it to me that you at least have the bare minimum level of self-control prove it to me that that you have the willpower to not drink something that literally no literally adds no benefit to your life in any situation but steals away your time your energy and your health at least prove that to me right at least make it a point like it's like taking a cold shower like you prove that you can do it you prove that you have that self-control at least do that if you want to work with me right and you can still work with me even if you drink but if you want to be someone that's indispensable and irreplaceable at least do that because nobody i know everyone around me drinks let's just make that clear i'm absolutely cool with everyone who drinks all right and i might even drink with you I'm just not going to work with you, or I don't prefer to work with you. If I have the choice, I'm going to choose to work with somebody else who doesn't drink. That's like that's one of the lessons I learned in my in my uh, adventures with Sham. Um, 